this video will be focusing on Stalin's rise to power. Okay, and like I said, I'm only going to do a very broad overview of the entire topic. If you want to go for more details, then you can always go to your textbook pages 37 to 43. So what exactly is our lesson objective? It is to explain the four factors behind Stalin's rise to power. The question is, why did Stalin rise to power and how did he rise to power? So we have our four factors here. The first of which is non-disclosure of Lenin's testament, Trotsky's unpopularity in the Politburo, pretended to be close to Lenin and control over party organisation. These four factors can be divided into two overarching categories, the first of which is circumstances after Lenin's death, which means things that happened after Lenin passed away in 1924, as well as Stalin's manipulation where he took things in his own power and changed things around. Okay, he played around with whatever he could. He used his abilities to manipulate how people perceived him and that's why we have pretended to be close to Lenin and control over party organization in this category. So let's first look at the first point, non-disclosure of Lenin's testament. You have to understand what non-disclosure means. Okay, in this case, non-disclosure means he did not reveal and they did not reveal very specifically to the public. So let's look at non-disclosure of Lenin's testament. What exactly did Lenin's testament say? In Lenin's testament, there was um, there were several criticisms against Stalin as well as other leading successes. However, the most important point for us to know is that Lenin wanted Stalin to be removed from the post of being a secretary general. Our question then is, why was he not removed? Considering that Lenin was one of the most powerful men in the Soviet Union at this point of time, how is it that the party decided to keep Stalin despite Lenin's wanting to remove him? So these are the reasons why he was not removed. Okay, Stalin succeeded in preventing Trotsky from delivering Lenin's message during the 12th Party Congress in 1923 before Lenin's death. Okay, Lenin's message was clearly to remove Stalin from power. And then we have the more important one, which is the fact that Lenin's testament was not disclosed to the public in 1924. It was not revealed to the public, however, the party members had full access to it, so the party members clearly knew that they, Lenin did not want Stalin in power. However, the public were unaware about it simply because the party members decided against revealing to it to the public. They were embarrassed by the fact that it contained criticisms of several leading successes within the party. And last but not least, some party members were more afraid of Trotsky who had connections to the army compared to Stalin. So they were willing to make do with Stalin remaining in the party. So how exactly did this help Stalin rise to power? Stalin was able to keep his power as secretary general and at the same time he received support from the public who believed that Stalin had been the natural successor of Lenin. Like I said, the Lenin's testament was not revealed to the public. Let's move on to the second factor, Trotsky's unpopularity in the Politburo. Trotsky was Lenin's right-hand man and he was also the head of the Red Army. This made him a very strong contender and in fact, I think between Stalin and Trotsky, there's a higher chance that Trotsky would have been the successor if Stalin had not done all the manipulative things that he had did. Okay, so, however, there were some problems with Trotsky which would be advantageous to Stalin. Trotsky often argued publicly with Lenin and at the same time he believed in something called the permanent revolution which the other party members did not like or did not, did not subscribe to. So he did not get along very well with the party members and they were also afraid of him because he was the head of the Red Army. That made him a very strong and dangerous person. Okay, so what happened or rather how did Stalin make use of this? Stalin joined forces with other contenders who also wanted Trotsky to be removed. And that is known as the Troika Alliance where he formed the alliance between uh, himself, Kamenev and Zinoviev. So over time, Trotsky lost his credibility within the party and this meant that Stalin had one less competitor to fight with. This allowed Stalin to consolidate his power and eventually lead him to his rise. Let's move to the third one, pretended to be close to Lenin. Okay, 
Stalin was responsible for Lenin's medical care during his last few days. He also held a huge funeral for Lenin and gave a speech. He established himself as chief mourner and prevented Trotsky from attending by giving him the wrong date. So in essence, what he did was he gave the public the image that he was the chosen one to be taking care of the Soviet Union after Lenin. And at the same time, he portrayed someone who was reliable and trustworthy by doing acts that made him look a certain way. So how did this benefit him? It benefited Stalin because he was able to receive the support from the public and this again helped Stalin in his rise to power. Last but not least, we have control over party organization. As I mentioned before, Stalin was the secretary general. His, uh, under his role, he could appoint and reappoint party members. So what he did was to replace his allies. I think a better word here would be to replace his opponents. For example, Trotsky. Okay, Trotsky was forced to resign from the Red Army in 1925 and he was expelled from the party in 1927. At the same time, he gained control of the Cheka, which is the secret police, and he got rid of Kamenev and Zinoviev by claiming that they supported Trotsky. Just one point, if you think back to the Troika alliance, right? Stalin was working together with Kamenev and Zinoviev. Kamenev and Zinoviev, however, when they when Stalin no longer needed them, he just threw them off to the side and made them look like they supported Trotsky as well. So this is where his manipulative idea comes out. And through these actions, it would mean that Stalin had less competitors to fight with. And again, this helps him consolidate his power. So more or less, I've given you a very brief idea of the four different factors. Okay, go and revise the rest on your own. Make sure you read out the textbook as well. Okay, that's all.